across the Atlantic, you've seen on either side of it, kind of the, the positioning growing ever kind of more concerted and united, have you not? What do you sense has been the spur for this hawkish rhetoric? Well, I think the, good to be with you, Carson. Mm. I think the, um, certainly the, the meeting in Portugal attended by a number of the key central bankers, uh, certainly they, they were singing from the same uh, song sheet, if you like. Mm. Uh, certainly uh, the comments earlier in the week by Draghi, although you know, I think they did make some attempt to correct, to, 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 to oh. modify them somewhat. Uh, I think they're still talking about cutting back on the, the quantitative easing. Uh, they're not looking at tightening rates there, but certainly they're moving towards that and conditioning the market for that sort of viewpoint. Uh, uh, Carney, as the Governor of the Bank of England, also sort of turned 180 degrees on what he'd said previously and, and said that they were going to start discussing uh, interest rate rises at the next meeting. Uh, the, the market's pricing in an 80% chance of a, of a rate rise in Mar by, before March of next mm. year in, in the UK. And that's a similar story with uh, the, uh, Canada as well. There's a 70% chance that they could raise so, rates so as well. So the, the problem here, though, is that the currencies in, in both those economies have been doing different things. Have they not? Now, are they not implicitly, particularly on sterling weakness, pricing in weaker growth uh, moving forward? This 15% this move lower since the Brexit vote, which has not really demonstrably moved off that trough uh, to that degree. How do you see that as being compatible with pricing in terms of gilts for the level of uh, tightening that now may occur in the face of that? Well, it's, it's certainly interesting. The, 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 the one factor that has been uh, continually discussed behind the, the, the need to raise rates in the UK is the fact that inflation has pushed up towards that 3% level, well above the 2% the band. And, and the, the main uh, uh, force behind that is the, the decline in, in sterling since Brexit, as you point out. Yeah. So, look, I, I think there, there are a number of different factors driving this. Certainly in, in the European markets, uh, you know, the, the weakness of the currency isn't a, a factor, but certainly in the UK it seems to be. And, and I think that's going to continue to push, uh, push the thought process moving forward. And we've been talking links with housing Tim, this was a week where London clocking its lowest price gain since 2012. So again, wealth effects or the sense of that becoming less of a uh, supportive factor, is that helpful or concerning a development? Well, you know, the store of wealth goes south, not north. Well, I think it, it's the, the, the central banks seem to be looking through this sort of data at the moment. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to be the case in the U.S. It's certainly the case, as you say, in the in the U.K. at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, that the the underlying data doesn't necessarily point towards a need to to raise rates, right. uh, but they seem to want to push the story of getting back to a more normal rate environment. And uh, as I said, the, the central banks obviously are talking to each other. They're all singing from the same song sheet. Yeah. Uh, and at the moment, that seems to be the the push of where they want to. To, to, to go. Well, don't know whether our Reserve Bank had any officials in attendance at their Portugal shindig. Let's hope they didn't get heat stroke uh, ahead of their meeting next Tuesday, right, Tim? We all uh, will we'll be watching closely for any nuanced commentary to come with that accompanying statement. For now, many thanks and have a great weekend. Tim Markworthy there from FIG in Sydney.